This is a haiku called Old Dog New Tricks. When it was my daughter's third year of being herself, I made all these kids around, and they're all going absolutely bananas. And uh, suddenly there was a deathly silence. And that went on just a little bit too long, and I was just getting up to see what it was, and they all dashed into the room, and they basically said this haiku. It's called Old Dog New Tricks. <gasps> The dog is in the loo! We were teaching him to pee and he just fell in. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I won't tell you my pet name for Petey Weety here. It's far too embarrassing. But this is a, a haiku and it's called Pet Names. And it tries to get the beginning of a relationship and the end of the relationship into three lines. It goes like this. Pet Names. He called her Yum Yums. She called him Cutie Wooty. Now just bastard, bitch. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is called uh, Handyman. Uh, I was going with my wife to a party and she poured herself into a uh, silk dress that uh, she would have to be open with a tin opener and she was an accident waiting to happen. And we were dancing and we got to that terrible stage in the party where somebody said, wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. Say pa. Big mistake. So this is called Handyman. Oh yes, it's a haiku that involves audience participation. So a haiku's got uh, 17 syllables. I only need you to participate in two of those syllables. You can do that, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So when I say it's the first uh, two syllables, you, I want you to shout the back. Okay. Party! 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 That's it! That's it! And your boo pops out. And I pop it back. I'm handy like that. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, that's all the fun bit of being married and stuff like that. And this is called longings. She had a longing for fried onions. He couldn't stand them himself. But there he was frying them for her at four o'clock in the morning, yawning, uh, unshaved. She balanced them on her bump. He sleepily smiled. Well, aren't you going to eat them? Ooh, no, I only like the smell. He wished the baby would come soon. <laughs> And this is another fan poem that uh, just something my friend used to always say all the time. Because she'd always have another boyfriend and another new boyfriend and another new boyfriend. So it's called Ms. Laid. I didn't lose my virginity. It was just mislaid. And happily discovered and rediscovered each time I went to bed. <laughs> right, I need audience participation for this as well too. I'm going to say the title and I think you'll know what to shout back. This is called, Oh No It's Not! Oh, oh, no, it is. Is. oh no It's Not! Oh, oh yes it is! In the pantomime of our love, I was the back end of the cow. You, you, were the principal boy. Our future was behind us! Thank you. <laughs> and this is called, uh, I don't know, how, to, how do you pronounce that, Pete? Oh, Peter Snyder. This is called... <laughs> Say that again. This is called. The room decided to go for a breath of fresh air. So it folded itself up, turned itself inside out, and wandered down the road, leaving an empty void which I was careful to avoid, being slightly afraid of going into a room that wasn't there, and wondering if I wouldn't be there too if I were to enter its abode. Didn't uh, like to take the chance. Later that evening, the room returned on its own, but hey, I wasn't there. <laughs> All this in heaven too. And so we celebrate our love as if it were a religion to be believed in and praise our days and all the ways that we discover to love one another. Each touch a parable, each kiss a little miracle. You are sunlight stained and transformed by glass. You are a candle kissing and caressing the dark. You are an incense mingled with music. You are the hymn that ends and begins that transcends all things. Each kiss a parable. Each touch a little miracle. One more piece. Um, this is a, a performance of Hamlet. We recently went to see Ralph Fiennes in uh, The Tempest. Wow. And Ralph Fiennes, of course, is more famous for being in Harry Potter and all that. And for ladies of a certain disposition to like him. Anytime Ralph came on the stage as Prospero, all the ladies had their binoculars up and going, Hoo! The minute it was Ariel or somebody else, it just all come down. Ralph comes back, <gasps> all the binoculars go up again. And then there's the bit where Prospero puts on the, the mask 
and all the uh, little fairies are twinkling up in the air and turning somersaults and all that. And then he remembers that uh, he's got a conspiracy to deal with and he goes, Avast, stop, all right, enough. And Prospero calls an end to the mask. So Ralph did that, uh, Ralph Prospero did that, and he said, enough, be gone. I have forgotten the foul conspiracy of Caliban and blah, 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 blah. So uh, all the masks, uh, all the goddesses vanished, except for one little fairy who had got stuck up on a thing and was turned upside down. And she was upside down, going, ah, 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 like that. And then there was a silence, and then the lights went up and they said, we seem to have a te technical difficulty. <laughs> and then the curtain actually came down, and then we waited 20 minutes and we had to run for a train. So we left this poor fairy up there and we didn't know what happened. So this is about uh, when you're backstage. This is a performance of Hamlet. And I was with my friend and I was backstage and watching Hamlet backstage, which is a totally different experience. It's backstage, an actor prepares. Waiting to die, Polonius has a fag behind the arras. Hamlet fancies both Ophelia and his mummy, pinches both their arses as he passes. Ophelia looks slightly shocked. Mummy looks rather pleased, thought it would never come. King Claudius really fancies the ghost, but doesn't stand the ghost of a chance because the ghost already has a date with Polonius' son, Liartus. The gravedigger fancies everyone, but alas, poor Yob, nobody, and I mean nobody, fancies him. Hamlet, looking down the Queen's de Cotelage, momentarily forgets his lines, misses his cue. Polonius has set fire to the curtains, but Hamlet smells a rat, a rat, and punts him out of his misery with a vase full of splash flowers. Afterwards, they all, all go for a pint and agree it was one of their better nights. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a delightful little ditty called uh, Autopsy. You made the opening incision with almost clinical precision. Took the heart out, found it wanting. Took the top off the head, removed the mind. What exactly was it you expected to find? I looked at you with dead eyes that said, it wouldn't have hurt half as much if you'd only waited until I was dead. <laughs> <laughs>